Hello, in this video, we're going to talk about uh, linear functions. That is the topic for 2.1. And so the first thing that I'm going to do is define what a linear function is, okay? And then determine whether a linear function is increasing, decreasing, or constant, okay? Uh, so again, so we, we talked briefly about this before, but whenever we say a function is increasing, that means the y values are increasing as you read the graph from left to right. Uh, for decreasing, it's when the y values are getting smaller, okay? And for constant, the y values are the, are the same, okay? And then we'll talk about uh, how to write the point slope form of an equation, okay? And then uh, we'll look at how to um, write and, inter and interpret a linear function uh, given some data, okay? So, all right, so here's the definition of a linear function. Okay? So a linear function okay, obviously has to be a function. Okay? So a linear function is a function whose graph is a line. Okay, very important. Okay. So when we say a function is linear, that just means basically uh, the graph of it looks like a line. Okay? And furthermore, uh, linear functions can be written in the slope intercept form of a line and this is the uh, this is the this is the equation. Okay, so you have x is your independent variable, and right. So this function depends on x, and there's a couple piece important parts to this uh, equation here. Okay, the first one has to do with the slope, okay? which is what you see here. So the m. Okay, so the, so the slope of the line has to do with the orientation of that line, okay? Um, there's a lot of, so in terms of the history here, there's, a, there's really not a clear reason why the M value is used, but one of the, but one of, the, one of the strong cases um, is that it may have been derived from, from the French word monteur. And monteur, you know, begins with M and in French, right? Um, you translate that from French to English, it means to climb, okay? So climb, right? If you're climbing a hill, uh, you're gaining elevation, right? So that looks like a slope, okay? Like a slope of a mountain. So that's just a little bit of uh, history there, okay? Uh, the other important part of this function is the B value that you see here, okay? And that has to, and basically that has to do with the y-intercept. Okay. So the y-intercept, if you recall, it, it basically means where the function, in this case the line, will intersect the y-axis. Okay. All right. Um, the other, so the other point is that this y-intercept in, in many applications, uh, we can think of this as the initial value, meaning that when, when x is zero, you're gonna get b, right? So we can easily verify that, right? If we evaluate this function at zero, then we get m times zero plus b. So f of zero must be equal to b. And so that's how we get that coordinate, okay? So a lot of uh, applications, uh, such as population models. So population models are dependent on time, right? So you look at, you look, you're given a, a certain uh, initial population at time equals zero, right? So zero would be the time and B would indicate the amount of population at the initial time that you're, that you're starting out with. Okay. All right. So let's look at the, uh, the next thing to look at is to, let's so is there a way to determine whether a linear function is increasing, decreasing, or constant? Okay, so let's take a careful look at that.
Okay, so basically the slope determines if the function is going to be increasing, decreasing, or constant. All right, so let's look at these cases. So if we have, right, so let's say we have a line. Right? Let's say our line looks like this. If it looks like that, then you can see that if you're going from left to right, okay, you can see that the y values are getting smaller. So this implies, okay, so that means that m is going to be less than zero. So this is going to be decreasing. If the line is in this direction, okay, right, if it looks, if the orientation of the line looks like this, um, so that means the y values are getting bigger. So this implies that slope is going to be bigger than zero. Okay, which, right, so that's increasing. Okay. And the last, right, the last. Last option, or the last case is going to be if the line is horizontal like this. So meaning there's no change, um, meaning that the y values are not increasing nor decreasing. Okay? So that's going to be when the slope is zero. Okay. So just by looking at this value here in front of x, you can tell whether or not the that linear function is decreasing, increasing, or constant. Okay. All right. Let's so let's take a look at some examples here. Okay. Um, let's say want to determine we want to determine whether the function is linear and if so uh, find the Find the or determine the slope and y intercept. Okay, so here they are. So we have f of x equals to 2 plus 3x. e of x equals to 3 times 1 minus 2x. And we have h of x equals to x times 4 plus 3x. And k of x equals to 1 minus 5x over 4. All right. Okay, let's take a look at each of these examples. Okay. So, all right. So what you need to look for is 
you need to be able to recognize, right? Or C, determine if the function given matches this form. this function right here. Okay, that is, so that is the phone, that's what a linear function looks like, okay? So if we go over here, if we look at the first one, okay? We have a three, right, in front of X, and then we have a constant there, right? So this is the same thing as writing F of X equals to three X plus two. So this is good, this is linear. Okay, we have right, so we have M is three, okay, B is two. So, okay. okay, and so then we can easily identify what this, we can easily see what the slope in it and the, um, what the y-intercept is. So the slope, okay, is going to be three. And the y-intercept is going to be zero comma two. Uh, very important, so very important here. If you put two, okay, if you write this way, that's technically not correct, okay, because it should be, right, it should be a, a coordinate, okay, right, so when you put two there, it doesn't make any sense, right, so it should be, the y intercept should be described as a coordinate, so you put zero, comma two, so that is the proper way to state the y intercept. Same thing when it comes to the x intercept, okay, x intercept should be, some value of x comma zero, okay? So very important there. So yes, so this is linear, right? This is linear. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. We have g of x equals to three, all multiplied by one minus two x, okay? So it's not quite in this form. However, through the use of to the use of what's called the distribution property, uh, we can we can put it we can take that and write it in this form. So we can distribute the three here so using some algebra. So we're going to get three minus six x. Okay, and then this is the same thing as g of x equals to minus six x plus three. Okay. All right, so we can see, we can easily see that uh, we have, right, we have our value right there in front of X, that's our slope. And then we have B, which we know is three. Okay, okay so the slope is equal to negative six. And the y-intercept is zero comma three. Okay, so it's we can get a lot of information just by uh, just by just by looking at these two values. Okay, um, and we're going to use that. We're going to so we're going to use that information later to help us graph the equation of that line. So that's coming up in the next section. All right, let's look at the next example here. We have h of x equals to x all multiplied by four plus three x. So again, we can distribute, right? We can distribute x, okay? We get 4x plus 3x squared, okay? And yeah, plus linear. So now here's the thing, we have a, right? So we have an x squared in there, right? We don't, we don't see an x squared in here, okay? So X has to have a power of one. So we have a power of one here, but then we have this additional term here. So that makes, so that X squared makes it nonlinear. Okay. So, so this is not linear. Right? And again, so it's this term. Remember from your, from your parent, slash basis functions, the x squared, right? The x squared looks like a shape of a U. So that's what this is gonna look like, okay? So the shape of U is definitely not a, it's not a straight line, okay? All right, so that's not, that's not linear, 
So we don't need to figure out, we don't need to see what the slope and y-intercept are. All right, next one, k of x equals to 1 minus 5x, all divided by 4. So, okay, again, we're going to try. We, so we try to take the function and try to see if we can put it into this form. And we can do that algebraically by taking each number, each, sorry, each, each of these terms and divide by 4. So this is going to give us 1 over 4 minus 5 over 4x. Okay. And then, so this is the same thing as minus 5 over 4x plus 1 fourth. Okay. So we can, I, we can identify now that this, right, we can identify the slope and intercept, and, sorry, and the y-intercept from this. Okay. Okay, so the slope is negative five fourths, okay, and the y-intercept is zero comma one fourth. So sometimes you know this is a good point where sometimes you're given a function, sometimes you may have to rewrite it in a certain way using algebra, right, uh, to see if you know to see if we get or to see what type of function it is. All right, so linear, okay, uh, linear. This is not linear because of the x squared, and this is linear because we can divide each of we can split this up. Therefore, we end up with a slope of negative five fourths, and the y intercept is one fourth here. Okay. So, so then, so if the question asks, okay, which, so for the for the linear functions, uh, right? Identify whether or not those are increasing or decreasing. So this one, because the slope is bigger than zero, that means this line is increasing. So this is an increasing function. Because the slope is positive. And for the other one, okay, since the slope is negative, okay, so again, this is positive here, this is negative. So that means that this so that means this line is decreasing. Decreasing function. Okay, because the slope is negative. So that line looks like this. Okay. It goes looks like like this one. Okay. And then this one does something like this. Okay. So again, the slope and the y-intercept can tell us a lot of information about that function. Okay. All right. The next thing to look at is, let's see. Oh, we're gonna, okay, we're gonna take a, uh, a look at the um, at calculating and interpreting the slope. And then we can use that to uh, to write the point slope form of an equation. All right, so let's see. I'm going to erase this part. Calculating and interpreting slope. All right. Okay, so let's say let's say we have a, a line. Okay. So I'm going to And so we have our Cartesian plane here. Okay, that's what this is. Okay. And let's say that we have some line. Looks like this. Okay. And I'm going to call this x1. Okay, over here, call this x2. And 
And so we have okay, x1. So our input, okay, for x1, we're going to call that y1. And then for x2, the okay, the, the output is going to be, I'm going to call that y2. And I'm going to denote this as our function. Okay, so, our, so we're working with a linear function. So by definition, okay, the slope of the line that you see here, okay, and remember we we define we use m to denote the slope. So the slope is going to be the okay, it's going to be the change that you see here, the, the difference, in other words, the, the distance here, the change in the y values. So that so taking the difference, that's just the distance. So y2 minus y1. Okay. All right. So, so y2 minus y1 represents the distance that you see here, the distance between uh, the, the distance between this line and this line. Okay. And then uh, the difference between the x values. Okay. So so we can indicate that on the on the graph here. Okay, so we have this. That's the difference in y's, right? And then the difference in x. And so you get so this is so sometimes we call this or denote this as the change in y, which is denoted by a triangle divided by the change in x. So well, some books state it this way. This is sort of just a compact way of saying this. Okay, so the delta just means the change, right? So change in y divided by a change in x. This is kind of how it's, so they use this uh, notation a lot in calculus, okay? So that's your change in y. And this is your change in x. Okay. All right. So, so the, the point here is, okay, the, the main thing is that if you're given two points, so all we need is two points on that line, okay? If we given two points, we can figure out the slope of that line by using this formula, okay? And the, the, and the, the, other, important, uh, the other important feature of this is that it doesn't matter what those two points are. Okay, you can choose, right? So basically you can you can pick a point here, right? Pick one here. And if you do, if you calculate the if you calculate the distance here, okay, take this distance, divide by this distance, it will give you the same value. Okay. All right, the same, so it's a ratio, right? So this over this, right? When you reduce it into if you put it, if you reduce that fraction. It's going to be equal to this, whatever this divided by this. Okay. And that's true at, at any two points. Okay. All right. So it doesn't, so the point is it doesn't matter what two points, which two points you pick. Okay. Um, the slope value will always be the same. And, and that has to go back to the idea that we talked about before with the average rate of change. The average rate of change for the line is right, it's not changing. Okay. So it's not changing because, uh, because of this idea, okay? So there's no fluctuation, right? So it doesn't, so in other words, the graph, right? So it doesn't go like this, okay? So it's, it's increasing at a steady rate, okay? All right. By the way, uh, to find the slope of something like this, just as a, just as a side here, um, you need, Right there's a, there's a theorem and there, well there's a definition in geometry, uh, which says that in order to find the slope of this function, okay, in order to determine that 
it will depend on the location. So in other words, if you look at the if you look at the point here, let's say at x1, whatever the slope of that tangent line is, okay. So whatever the slope of that tangent line is, it's going to be the slope of that function at that point. Okay. So in this case, right, it depends on location. So let's say you're here at a different point. So if you draw the slope here, or let's do something like that's not quite the same. Let's say here. So there's a there's a line, there's a something called the tangent line, which means that tangent line, just like with uh, like the tangent to a the line that's tangent to a circle, it, that right within a certain region, that line only intersects that function at that point. Same thing here. Okay, within a certain region, that tangent line only intersects that point on the curve. Okay. So the slope, the slope of this tangent line is different from the slope of this tangent line. So, so for something like this, when you're asked to when you're when you're asked to figure out the slope of the function, okay, it's going to be dependent on the location that you're it depends on where you're looking at. And how do you so the question is how do you figure out the uh, how do you figure out the slope of these tangent lines? Okay, well, that is calculus. That's the beginning of calculus. That's what they're going to show you later on. Okay, when you, for those who, who plan on taking calculus. Okay, for the time being, the functions that we look at for, this, for the slope is, are going to be linear. So, uh, so, so, it doesn't, so it doesn't matter for the location, right? So, um, so any two points that you pick, this formula will work. Okay, so all right. So let's let's do an example here. Okay, let's say we want to find the slope of the line. That's going through the points. Okay, those two points are going to be minus two, four. And negative one eight. Okay. Well, we have right. We're given our two values, or I should say, two coordinates. Okay. And all we need to do is apply this formula. Okay. So let's do that. So I'm going to call this. I'm going to call this x one. Y. I'm going to call it y one. X. I'm going to call it x two and y two. So it should be noted here that doesn't matter the doesn't matter which point I which coordinate I start with. So I could have said x1, y1 here, and this would be x2, y2. That doesn't matter. It's gonna it's gonna work out the same. Okay. All right. So the slope here. So I'll just call it m. All right, so we just plug in what we're what we're given. So we have y two eight minus four, and then x two minus x one. So we have minus eight minus a negative two. So be really careful there. Um, don't forget that the minus sign. This x one could be positive or negative. Like in this case, it's negative two. So you're going to minus one minus a negative two. Okay, so if you leave off the negative here, you're going to get obviously you're going to get the wrong answer, and I don't want that. I don't want that to happen to you. Okay, all right. So you know, it's try to avoid those careless errors. Okay, so we're going to get uh, on top. We'll get eight minus four, which we know is four. On the bottom, this is the same as negative one plus two. That's going to give us four over. 
which gives us four. And so based on that result, okay, so based on that, okay, um, is that line, is the line that's going through these two points, is that line going to increase or decrease? Well, because the slope is positive, that means the line has to be increasing, okay? All right, so it's increasing, it's an increasing line, uh, i.e. increasing function, right? Increasing linear function, okay. All right. So another, as another, another uh, important aspect of this, okay, um, is that we can think about this as, uh, geometrically, we can think about this as rise over run. So sometimes you'll see those terms being used along with this idea, okay? Rise over run. So for example, let's say you're here, right? You go up, right? We go up this distance, okay? That's what this is telling you. And then you're gonna go over this distance, okay? So that would be a positive, right? Positive value. If you go this way, so you go up and then over in this direction to the left, that's gonna be a negative value. So that's gonna give you a line this way, right? Okay, so for example, say the line is like this. So, so it's a, it has a negative slope. So if, you, right, so if you're here, right, you're gonna go up, right? Okay, so that's the rise and over. Okay, so you have rise here. And this is run. So I tried. Okay. So to the left, that's that's going to give you a negative value. So, right. So we end up getting say a positive or a negative that gives you a negative slope. Whereas this okay, over here, so you start here, go up, and over. Okay, so this will be rise. Okay. This will be run, 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 rise over run. So this is right. So this will be this will be positive slope. Okay. Slope is positive. Over here, slope is negative. So that's that's what the rise over run, that's how the rise over run is interpreted. And we're gonna use this idea in the next section uh, when we look at how to plot a line, okay? All right, next thing on the agenda is to define the point slope form of, of, a, of an equation of a line. All right. All right, so if we start with we start with the definition of the slope, okay? We have this y2 minus y1. Oh, 
all divided by x2 minus x1, okay? So we can make a little modification here, okay? So if we change, okay? So if we, ch if we change y2 to x2, we can, we can basically uh, replace y2 with just y and x2 with x, okay? So let's do that. So I can replace this. So nothing special here, okay? All we did is said, okay, instead of using this, instead of using y2 and x2, well, we can replace this with y and x. That's okay. This is, right, okay? It's, it doesn't matter, okay? All right, then now what we can do, okay, is that we can rearrange this, okay? Um, and we do that by, multi what we can do is multiply both sides by x minus x1, so. Let's do that. And I'll put this in color code. And see exactly what's going on here. So we take this, multiply both sides by x minus x1. So what we're gonna do, so what we're gonna get is, I'm gonna put the m in front, okay? And then over here, x minus x1, right? You have, think of this as, this is over one. So those cancel out. So you're left with y minus y1, okay? So now let's write it this way. Just switch it around. And therefore, that gives you, so basically that gives you the point-slope form of a line. Okay. So by switching these, or I should say by renaming, renaming those variables, okay, Okay, by renaming those, so this becoming y, right, and this becoming x, and then we can rearrange this using algebra, and now we have this form, okay? And x1 and y1 basically represent the coordinate on that line, okay? So if we know the slope, if we given the value, right, the coordinate on that line, we can come up with this. We can write our we can write the equation on line in this form, okay? So this, so this is just coming directly from this, okay? All right, let's look at an example of this. All right, so let's say we want to write the point slope form. Of an equation. Okay. So write the point slope form of an equation line with a slope of three. Passes through six comma negative one. Okay. Then what we're going to do is uh, rewrite it in the slope intercept form. And that was, so the slope intercept form, uh, that was the equation that, that was, that we first, uh, that we first, 
talked about in our definition. But that was this one. So you have the slope and you have the, the intercept. Okay, so this is what's called uh, the slope intercept form. All right, so let's, so first we need to, right, we need to, uh, given the information, we need to come up with this, okay? All right, so we have our, we have our slope, okay? We have to be given that, okay? or we have to be given enough information. So we're, in this case, we're given three and we're given our coordinate, okay? All right, so we have enough information here. So we're gonna get, so we have y minus y1 equals to m times x minus x1. Okay, so slope is three. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug that in. And then the coordinate, so we have the coordinate six, negative one. So that is, right, that is the x. So we're gonna let that be x1. So this is x1 here. And y one. Okay. So we're going to substitute those into here. We get y minus y one. So y one is negative one. So y minus negative one equals to three times x minus six, okay? All right, so now this is going to give us y plus one, so we have double negative there, equals to three x minus 18. So I went ahead and distribute the uh, three. And now, okay, so, all right, so let's back up here. So this result right here, okay, that you see, so let's pause here for a minute. So you have this result. So that is the that's the point slope form. Okay. Uh, in fact, I can we can keep the three keep that undistributed for now. Okay. So that basically is the slope intercept form. So technically, this if we simplify the middle one. So so if we distribute, so if we basically just make that to a positive one, that's what we have so far. So that gives us exactly this form. So we have y minus y1, right? That be, so that'd be y minus one, right? Y minus negative one is y plus one. And then we have our slope and then x minus six. So we have this form. So this is our slope, uh, our point slope form, okay? So sometimes, depending on the application, sometimes we need to put this into, into a function, okay? Which means that uh, we need to get y equals to something in terms of x. And that's what, that's what this represents, okay? All right, so we can easily do that from here, okay? So we just go ahead and solve for y. We're gonna get y equals to three times x minus six minus one. And then go ahead and distribute the three get three X minus 18 minus one. Okay. And then we can simplify this. This is just Y equals to three X minus 19. So that is the same as saying this, F of X equals to three X minus 19. Okay. So there's the function expressed in slope intercept form. Okay.
Okay, so we can easily go, so again, so we can easily go from a point slope form of a line, okay, right? Using using the slope and the and the coordinate that's that's on that line. Okay, so we do that here and then solve for y. And then that just means, right? So this just means that this is a function of x. Okay? You know, linear, right, linear function here. Okay. So both of these are so so both of these are important. Uh, sometimes we need to sometimes you know we work with this form. Sometimes we need to work with this form. Okay. All right. So point slope form and then slope intercept form. Okay. But I would say that this I would say that this form is uh, uh, used more often uh, than this form. Okay. All right. So next thing is to let's take a look at a uh, at a small application problem uh, given some data. Yeah, let's do that here. Okay, so let's suppose we have some data values, okay? So use the data values um, to, to write a linear model. So in other words, uh, when we say linear model here, we mean that we want to, so the goal is to come up with a function uh, a linear function that that goes to the that basically contains those data values. Okay, um, so here are the data values. Okay, so um, we're, we're going to have the first. So the first row will be the number of weeks, and the second row will be the number of rats. So we're doing a. So this is uh, data for the population of rats. So we have, let's say, for the first, so for the for zero weeks, so that's the beginning. So that's going to represent the beginning of the um, of the duration of the of the weeks that we're using. And so zero weeks. So zero weeks. Let's assume that we have a thousand. There's there's a thousand rats. Okay. And then let's say second week. Uh, there's one thousand eighty. Say the fourth week, there's 1,160 rats. And then six, six weeks, let's say there, after six weeks, there's 1,240 rats. Okay. All right, so there's our data values, okay? So we what we want to do is we want to again so we want to construct uh, we want to come up with a function um, in this case a linear function such that when we plug in any of these values okay so this being your input this being your output you plug in any of these it will give us our output. Linear function. Okay. All right, 
case it. So rewrote that in case it doesn't show up too well. All right, so there's our data device. So one thing you should observe, if not already, is that if you if we, if we look at the uh, differences here, the differences in the number of weeks. So for example, here, right? So this is, right? So this is two, zero plus two, we get two. Two plus two is four. Four plus two is gonna give us six, okay? Uh, on the bottom here, right, you have 10 plus, I'm uh, sorry, 1,000 plus 80, right, gives us 1,080, 1,080 plus, plus 80 will give us 1,160, okay, so just adding, and 1,160 plus 80, that will give us 1,240. So if you take, so if you notice here, if you take 80 divided by two, right, this one, you get 40 here, 80 divided by two is 40, 80 divided by two is gonna be 40. Um, that actually represents the slope of the, of, the, of the linear function that we're trying to find. And that's very indicative of the fact that we're working with, uh, we're working with linear data here, okay? So, it's a, so that's how you can tell whether or not we can use a linear function. Basically look at, you know, look at the slopes to see if they're if they're constant. So, right, so 80 over two is 40, 40 and 40, okay? All right, so we need, so to build our model, okay, um, uh, we're gonna use the slope intercept form, okay? So, since we're using W and P, so P, so W is the, um, so W is the independent variable, P is the dependent variable. That depends on W. So we need the slope, okay? W, remember W is the, is the independent variable, okay? okay? Plus P, okay? Okay, so that's your independent variable, okay? And B, right? oh, I'm sorry. B is your dependent variable. Okay. All right, so we have the slope, okay? In fact, you can, we can tell right here, right? The difference in the output, right? divided by the difference in inputs. So in other words, change in, change in Y divided by change in X. In fact, we can verify this, okay? So we have, okay, let's use the first coordinate. So we have zero comma 1,000. So remember, this is your input, this is your output. And the other one, you have two comma 1,080. So using our slope formula, okay, we have Y2, minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Okay, uh, let me make some real here, sorry. All right, so this, we can call this x1, Call it x y y one. We call this x two, and this one y two. Now, if we plug everything in, okay, we're going to get one thousand eighty minus one thousand, all divided by two minus zero. So that's going to give us eighty. So one thousand eighty minus one thousand is eighty divided by two. So not surprising, we get 40. That's what we that's what we see here, right? So 80 over two is 40, 80 over two, 80 over two. So again, this, this brings back the point that, that I said earlier, that no matter what two points you pick, okay? Um, no matter what two points, no matter what two coordinates we use, 
uh, if this is a line, the slope, the slope is going to be the same. Okay. And in fact, you can use, right, if we use zero comma a thousand, we can also use this. Right? Okay. You're going to get when you add these up, you get 80, 80, 80. You take that result, divide by six, two, four, six, and you and you end up, you still end up getting the value of 40. Okay. So point here is that we have our slope. And now the question is, what is the uh, what is our b value? Well, remember the b value corresponds to the y-intercept, and that is the value that is the uh, value that you see here. That is our y-intercept, right? One x, right? So when x is zero, you get this y value. So b here, right? So b is going to be one thousand. Okay. Now we have all the we have all the information we need to figure out or to come up with our function. So we have p of w equals to our slope was forty. So forty times w plus one thousand. There it is there is our linear function. Okay. So we can check right. Put in, uh, evaluate the function at 2, 40 times 2 is, right, 80, 80 plus 1,000, you get 1,080, okay, right, and then, right, you plug in 4, 40 times 4 will be uh, 160, 160 plus 1,000 is 1,160, all right, so there's, there's the function, right, there's the function that we need, okay, so, this actually is an important uh, for other things because if we assume, okay, if we assume that this trend continues, okay, all right. So in other words, we get we add on two here, we add another eighty. So if we continue doing that, if it, if this kind of uh, if this kind of rat population uh, continues, um, uh, continue if it continues in that way then we can use this function as what's called a forecast model. Meaning that, let's say you wanna know how many rats there will be um, at, after 10 weeks, okay? All right, so you have your, so we have our function. So to answer that, you would just evaluate this function at 10 and then you would get your answer. So you would get 10 times, so 40 times 10, so 400. Plus 1,000, that would give you 1,400 rats. So that would be the value for uh, 10 weeks. Okay. So this, so this actually is, um, this is actually the um, kind of an I so related to the idea of what's called machine learning, or sometimes it's also audit, so uh, and forecast modeling. Okay. So machine learning is all about, um, in a way, it's using it's using data. Okay, to come up with or to come up with a, a, a prediction of what's going to happen. Okay, so uh, machine learning you can use you can use machine learning to predict certain um, to forecast certain population models. Okay, um, you can use it to predict or come up with an estimate of of what the stock market will be. But again, there's so there's so many other factors involved. But the bottom line is that this. Uh, this is kind of the idea of where of what of what machine learning is. Okay, all right. Uh, there's other there's other mathematical topics that fit into the topic of machine learning. So, uh, but like I said, those, this is kind of the, the foundation of it. Okay, uh, and and the fact that uh, we can use this to do for what's called forecast modeling. All right. So, I think that's a really neat, nice application. Uh, for uh, for linear functions, okay, uh, we can use this on we can use this idea for any uh, for any kind of population, okay. All right, so I'll go ahead and stop here, okay. Um, in the next in the next part, next section, uh, we're going to look at how to uh, how to plot or how to graph a, a line, and that can be done using if we know the slope and if we know the y-intercept, uh, then that's enough to come up with the with the plot, okay. So I'll stop here uh, and I'll see y'all next time.